why would you say pacing matters? Well, the the best argument for pacing is that as humans, we're not like a gasoline engine. So we have just a limited supply of energy and we have a limited ability to go over a certain threshold. So I guess you can kind of think of that like your your car where you can only hit the rev so high before you're like, oh, yeah, I can't go any harder. <laughs> but then you can keep going until you run out of fuel. And but, you know, with your car, you can go for. Depend, I, but I don't know, but like <laughs> humans can only go for a, a sh- short amount of time so we need to figure out like how to get the most out of ourselves in that set amount of time or distance yeah with it like we have blowing up cracking hitting the wall whatever you want to call it like we've been there we've all been there and it's kind of how how did you get there why did you you get there and because a lot of people are going to look at it through a few different lenses i i guess like some like how i used to look at it matt was I wasn't training hard enough. You know, yeah, I, I was not, maybe not fresh enough. Um, I was definitely good enough, you know, in my own head. And, and the reason I slowed down was I had not done enough speed or hard training or race specific training. You know, yeah. that's that, the same for me. So I remember I could, um, thinking, cause, at, the, at our local races, these guys from the Trek Volkswagen team would show up, which was like the team. And I could start and I could keep them in sight at the start. I was like, man, if only I could just keep doing this. Like, I just need to get get better at starting. <laughs> and I'm like, well, now that I think back, I'm like, well, obviously they were just way better than me. So there was no point in trying to hold on to them at the start because uh, that just actually led to me racing worse. So, yeah. I think, you know, once we can get a good handle on pacing, we can actually get the most out of ourselves. Yeah, that was like exactly the same for me where I was, well, if we ever look at these pacing strategies, the like positive pacing, uh, which is kind of you start fast and uh, get progressively slower. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> or, pretty much everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are, um, yeah, I, you, you have this kind of perception of your ability and generally that does not align with actual ability <laughs> uh, or physical capacity. And yeah, it's such a trap because um, in especially endurance sports or pretty much anything lasting longer than 10 minutes, the first part of the race, the first quarter is within your physical capabilities, you know, well within. And so it's like, yeah, I'm, this, this feels comfortable, especially if you've tapered well. And so you just get drawn into this trap of like maybe this is the day (laughs) yeah this is the day where i i do something extraordinary i always think about positive pacing as like the most painful way to race so positive pacing remember is when you start out really hard and then you gradually slow down and this is what we all do and it feels like the way that you're supposed to be racing so you start off as hard as everyone else does And you just make the race as painful as possible. So it just sounds just, it just sounds like it's really going to hurt, right? But you don't, you're going slower and you don't realize it because it's just as hard as the start was because you're just suffering and digging deep the whole time. Yeah. So that's like graph A on this, um, on the slide that we're, we're showing. So you start, you know, with the power velocity really high and it finishes really low. But if we had to like, it'd be the inverse, right? If you were doing like a, a RPE rate of, you know, perceived exertion where you're like, I'm trying so hard and for some reason my, my power meter is not calibrated or everyone else <laughs> did something, you know, better than me in training. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's one of the tricky things, you know, cause we've, especially we were training 10 or 15 years ago, we were training with heart rate and that was kind of the only way. So we'd, we'd have this set heart rate zone that we wanted to work in. And if we were doing a five minute or 10 minute effort, we'd try and get into that zone really, really quickly. But what that kind of ignores is this delay in the heart rate as it tries to, as starts to catch up and you hit like a steady state. So um, what normally ended up happening is positive pacing in those intervals as well, where you start off super hard and then you have to gradually pull back the effort to make sure your heart rate doesn't get out of the zone. It was just such a horrible way of training and everyone did it. And, you know, a lot of the the OGs are still training like that. But now that we have power, like we know 
exact and pace like we know exactly what to do well even um i was showing you my my video i'd put up uh around like running power and hill intervals so pace is irrelevant running up a hill like how do you you know what's what's five percent versus seven percent gradient <laughs> pretty hard to tell um my heart rate took like five minutes to catch up on this 20 minute climb so it was like i was you're essentially running blind you're like how does this feel good I don't know, is a six or seven RPE out of 10 kind of thing. Um, but I had a running power meter, so I just stuck with that and it, it showed like how consistent the effort was start to finish. Cause once you know kind of your physiological limits, like we're going to talk about, you, you know, the percentages within which you can work to those, those limits. Um, and yeah, so that, that's going to help with like some of these other pacing strategies we're, we're showing here, um, like parabolic, variable, even. Um, even's probably the hardest to do, but the most effective. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> I have some new thoughts about uh, even pacing strategies, actually. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so the U shape, it's most probably the the like what most people are ending up doing a lot of the time where you start fast because that's just how it kind of goes uh and then you you quickly recalibrate like oh no that was too fast you know (laughs) and you slow down to a more appropriate intensity um or output and then you get you know the end is in sight and you have the capacity to speed up so yeah, because you took a nice little snooze in the middle of the race because <laughs> you were recovering. 